At Speedway, we've always been here to get you what you need when you need it. We're committed to keeping our stores open, clean, and safe, so you can stay fueled and refreshed all summer long. We've got cold drinks for hot days and frozen drinks for even hotter ones, plus energy boosts, quick bites, and pick-me-ups. We're always on your way, and we're always here for you. So no matter what you need, when you stop by, we'll be ready. Now buy any three cooler beverages and get 500 bonus Speedy Rewards points. Welcome to Audio Gyan with Kedar Nimkar, a podcast that documents insightful conversations with Indian designers, artists, musicians, writers, thinkers and creatives of all types. Catch us on iTunes or visit audiogyan.com for more Gyan sessions. Here's your host Kedar Nimkar. Arthur G. Doty, a Dominion activist, once said, Of all our national assets, archives are the most precious. They are the gift of one generation to another, and the extent of our care of them marks the extent of our civilization. Today, I have Ruturaj Parik with us on Audio Gan. Ruturaj is an architect and a partner at Matter, an architecture, design, and content firm based in Goa. He has been involved in architecture, urban design, planning, curatorial and social projects. Ruturaj regularly writes about contemporary works and ideas on architecture relevant to India and its subcontinent. I stumbled upon him when I visited an architecture conference called Frame Conclave this year, actually 2019. Uh, Ruturaj uh, designs and writes from Goa. So, yeah, thank you Ruturaj for giving your time and it's a real honor to have you on audio again. Thanks, thanks Yedav. So I've kept the name as uh, the topic of uh, today as Think Matter with Ruturaj and uh, it's mainly to understand your thought process behind archiving and also to understand what matter does and how is it helping uh, uh, fellow designers, fellow architects and also the younger generation. Sure. So to set the context, if you can start by just telling us what is matter and like a bunch of other things which you're doing under it. Uh, mainly the studio matter part of it and also the think matter part of it and also some bits of the merit list, the short list and other place things. I mean, this is just to set the context and then we'll deep dive into archiving as a concept. Sure. So um, when we set up matter in 2014, uh, it was more uh, of a reaction to what we had witnessed closely in the discipline of design publishing across India. So we did not want to create this commercially driven Bohemoth. We, um, like your podcast, we realize that smaller individual driven efforts of production, of publishing are in the longer run more effective than <clears throat> this sort of large, um, out of control kind of commercial establishment. So uh, that's where matter originated. And initially, it wasn't a design practice, it was only a publishing practice. And Slowly, as we started getting more work, I got more and more interested in doing architecture as well. So the architecture, design and publishing, the three sort of core parts of matter, the architecture part sort of followed the publishing part. Uh, we were always, books were always our first love uh, and architecture books more so. But as we um, um, started working on Think Matter, the portal, we realized that um, um, the the landscape of uh, you know uh, uh, critical thinking about architecture in India is is fairly absent, hmm. and very few people in silos are trying to do something. We also do not have a culture traditionally in India of critical um, you know critical analysis, review, critical yeah. analysis. Uh, we don't have a culture of criticism in in design in India. So that's what we wanted to kind of address. And in our own way, we wanted to create a world in which we could also reflect on what's happening um, um, in and around us. So that's what uh, where Meta began. And as we uh, started taking up more design work, our publishing practice grew. But it was founded in these three to four critical ideas. The first was we wanted a open, accessible, free online resource, especially for students. So Think Matter was that. We wanted to create a responsible, you know, sharp, critical review of projects in India, not, not another award. 
and that's how the merit list uh, was born. We also wanted to create a very good, high quality professional journal. And inside was is that um, inside has also slowly moved into the digital realm, but still it's it it is a biannual journal. And lastly, uh, with the Frame Conclave, we wanted to close this loop and create a you know biennial kind of an event where we can bring together a, a you know like-minded people, let's say, to have a dialogue on uh, concerns of contemporary architecture in India. So the first one, which discussed modern heritage, looked at the history of architecture in India, especially post-independence history of architecture in India, and um, we we kind of um, want to also create frame as a platform for people to have uh, difficult discussions, uh, not just discussions where everybody presents their work and pats each other's backs, but but more which which kind of have a greater churning and greater uh, confrontational. You know, we we must have more platforms in India which are which can confront the uh, the difficult questions that are are uh, posed to our profession in general. Mm-hmm. So that's what Frame hopefully will become. So, th- so that's pretty much our universe. Apart from many small uh, initiatives in publication, in curatorial initiatives that we are involved in. These are kind of our four critical ideas that we are working on as matter. And as a design practice, uh, um, it's um, uh, an architectural practice. But because, uh, unfortunately, since we were in publishing first and then, so it is all the more difficult for us to create, you know, to match our own benchmarks, um, ideas, I mean, the standards that we judge the world by, let's say as a design, as a, a curatorial practice, we would, Hope that our work also matches those standards, which is what the big conundrum is right now. You know, which is the difficult part. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that's the background for matter. Mm-hmm. And the over, obviously, there are a lot more questions which can be asked on uh, practices and the kind of work you're doing. Mm-hmm. But uh, this conversation, I wanted to generally sure. focus more on archiving because that's the first line which you see, yeah. and which is also what I'm trying to do through audio again is yeah. archiving thoughts and archiving yeah. or documenting some of the uh, important people, right? So, uh, why do you think archiving or documentation is important or required, especially in independent India? See, uh, you know, when Sept set up its archives. Um, uh, uh, but let me take it a little be, uh, sure. behind. Uh, when I was sort of moving out of uh, a role at uh, Indian Architect and Builder, uh, Charles Correa was at that time putting together um, his archive. Uh, these drawings were supposed to go to RIBA. And it, it's, it was quite unfortunate because Correa's entire work and his entire thinking and his foundational sort of ideas are all here. Very much. Unfortunately, the hard copies are somewhere in in RIBA. But there is a reason for that. You know, we do not have a culture of preserving really anything. Hmm. Uh, now, a lot gets preserved by chance because we, we, we are also a civilization that produces a lot of culture. But uh, especially in architecture, um, since um, a lot of formal practices were set up after independence, we do not till set up set kind of... Uh, Put to put a sort of uh, uh, put an agenda around the Sept archives. Uh, JJ was the only place, and Doshi's office, Vastu Shil, had which had some way of cataloging and archiving. Hmm. There must be other places, but they were not. They were kind of out of public view. So if an architect like Korea has to um, um, put all his work somewhere, there is there is really nothing. Hmm. Now, but uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Twitter. But these practices were individual proactive efforts, or mainly driven by, say, Nehru or these kind of people. Uh, which which practices you refer to? The archiving as a concept, like well, well, for example. Ne- ne- so, uh, uh, if you uh, think about Nehru himself, he was very interested in this idea. He did set up the National Archives. He was instrumental in, um, uh, you know, approving, you know, pushing funding for the academies. Uh, so that they can create their own libraries and all. Um, the entire interest in science and all came from him. But somehow, uh, uh, architecture and especially post-independence practices in architecture, you know, the iconic ones, um, were fairly, I mean, we 
also it we are culturally different you know hmm. i can imagine a um, a swiss studio or a french studio kind of you know uh, treating every tracing that they produce with gloves and putting them in in you know nicely catalog boxes temperature controlled <laughs> <laughs> temperature controlled boxes we don't have that culture we we throw sheets on the ground so we are, don't even i mean lot of these practices um uh, uh, mrs somaya brinda somaya tried a lot to archive uh, pravina mehta's and hema sankalya's work with a difficult task because when they also shut down their practice korea at least had the iba where the things can go but these practices no way i mean hmm. kamu ayer also uh, you know so the, a lot of these old practices um, they don't have any way to send this work um, now sept is there they are trying to put together a better version of uh, let's say a professional archive but um, but for us more than the physical stuff it was the ideas which were important hmm. the physical stuff of we would love to do it at some point but right now we don't have the either the space or the bandwidth or the budget to do it so what we wanted to do with matter is to um take a thin slice through time and observe that cross section through what are the prevalent ideas you know what are the ideas in the forefront of our profession right now who are these people who have in um in this moment being able to frame those ideas so there are uh, there are many good practices we thought will influence you know the next generation the generation to come what happens to their ideas now of course we uh, again th- we are in, in in an extremely other ec- you know we are, we are now in a place which is completely on the other extreme where there's a strange kind of this media boom but most of it is fairly touching the surface you know it's all superficial and so our um, um thought process was that if we as matter not only create a uh, good content and on contemporary architecture in ourselves but also create this little network with people like you or like rajesh who does architecture live or geeta and bridge who do landscape journal to create this little uh, sort of ecosystem uh, of people who are genuinely interested in content on architecture in india and also genuinely interested in the ideas that emergent ideas of our time so our our effort with matter was twofold one is to create this um, create and archive this original content put it in the public domain make it as accessible as possible so we have never really thought about monetizing and all that um the, you know we we kind it we had tough time to actually fund a lot of models that we um uh, were thinking of luckily we had patronage from some organizations like uh, takshila and hna johnson and all but mostly these efforts were self uh, funded initially hmm. and this was the story with all good content initiatives across uh, no conde nast is going to give write me a check any day so so in that case um, i found other people like you who on their own steam um, create very good content and uh, and our active effort was also to try and reach out to them to to kind of cross have some sort of cross pollination with yeah, yeah collaboration with with people like that hmm. uh so uh, the, the the archiving idea slowly has now grown into this um, let's say this repository of contemporary ideas hmm. on architecture in india so i want matter to act as a repository of sorts um let's say uh, a 100 episode of your podcast uh, uh uh a thousand good buildings through merit list um uh, about 2000 good lectures over 6 years stuff like that so p- putting together this this uh, this uh uh packet hmm. which because now we have a great access to digital media can be easily disseminated across the world will probably be some kind of what what we said in the introduction you know some kind of legacy of sorts hmm. i think and ra- now we are at a, a at a critical time because the the sort of confusing initial times after um you know after the 90s and the liberalization and you know the money coming in and the big farm houses that's gone that's gone yeah yeah that's we gone. are started <coughs> to like find that voice now yes. maybe yeah yes yes that and also the 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 noise is sort of you know the din is it it's very high in decibel so that's that's it it takes its own course or it's died down so what we are seeing now is that these younger practices 
which are emerging uh, who are located in this idea of uh, trying to find meaningful work in india and trying to understand what our landscape is about what our people are about the economics and the social capital that we have in india and the incredible wealth of skills and knowledge that we have around so we are now getting more and more interested in this generation mm-hmm. which is kind of post liberalization generation who have seen this madness of having access to capital but kind of are trying to slow things down and locate themselves more firmly on the ground mm-hmm. hopefully um in another 5 to 6 years we will have a good enough uh, knowledge base or data to then start making critical observations of this time mm-hmm. so that that's the whole agenda mm-hmm. in in some way mm-hmm. to act, to add to that uh, like uh, i'd given one talk at uh, pune design festival mm-hmm. and i started off with the slide which was actually a, a screenshot of the the series called abstract on netflix hmm, correct, and yeah. there paula sha was just showing her drawings yeah. and the, there was like a almost like a big gallery of just stacked boxes and i was surprised to know it's all her life's work hmm. right so that's where i started ki look at like paula sha one of the important graphic designers of our time hmm. and look at the content of archived work she has done yeah and so, there is greater interest you know uh, uh, from coming from abroad but that interest is i, I wouldn't put too much sort of emphasis on it because mm. that's more sort of this fascination to the exotic new land mm. that everybody has found and then every, all the big museums are going to that's not really but but you know just to have a, a to ascribe some value to our own culture uh, of of architecture in india and that we somehow don't have we keep celebrating people like korea and and of course there is there are reasons for that but you know like people like kamu ayer so essential to the city you know so such brilliant um you know practice uh, years of work consistent good quality grounded work now what happens to uh, the work of somebody like kamu ayer or what happens to his ideas and uh, that i think um so so this secondary layer or this this kind of generation which uh, which binda soma calls the bridge generation which spans the masters with to the post liberalization practices you know if for, even for them people like uh, cnt prem chanda workers practice there is a there is a in, immense value in evaluating how much culturally they have produced mm. in the silent times you know in the times of emergency the times of the dark times before uh, um you know before the 90s uh, uh not socially you know difficult economically impossible times and they were able to produce quality work silently uh, without any great um you know without propaganda uh, about, about it. propaganda about it hardly any awards then you know hardly the one or two magazines kind of reporting from some uh, bunker somewhere you know maybe a plus d was there inb was around um i imagine there was a nice beautiful magazine called so ram uh, rehman a uh, house has this boxes of uh, um uh, mid uh, you know about 80s uh, 70s and 80s early 90s design magazines hmm. and there's the, there's one which was just title design yeah. and he and showed few of them at the conclave he, yeah. he did brilliant stuff and yeah. it, so these these things are there i mean very much yeah. when um, um they did the state of architecture this vitrine of this this select books but you can also look at how little was produced as content you know in that time so even that's an interesting time you know which uh, um which is which is ki- which kind we kind of skipped mm. we went from cha korea doshi rival uh, kanvinde even kanvinde's work i mean what a herculean task that tanuja and sanjay have done to put together in that book you see it's simply going to be lost you know and, say, and now you are seeing these monographs coming out people like hasmuk patel people like ah, hasmuk patel uh, yeah so you know fantastic lot of book, book yeah. that that thing is and uh, there is another one which is uh, anant raj's book and the one that shubhra has done and then when you look at this work and you think that where the hell were these drawings you know all this time mm-hmm. and and that that kind of creates uh, th- this big question you know that we have to really and we are losing time in that we have to kind of reconcile the 20 25 years that have passed between the let's say uh, 60s and the 90s 
where there were other practices. There were, of course, the celebrated practices doing their work, but there were a lot of other practices. There was great work being produced in Bangalore, in Chennai, very silently mm -hmm. and in very, very frugal, very extremely uh, dignified way. Which is also something that now we are getting more and more. That that was the reflection from frame, I think, okay. more, more so. Yeah. yeah. So I may be like wrong, but we have celebrated, say, Hampi's architecture, Khajuraho's, and yeah. Taj Mahal, and then directly we have now into. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether I should use, but yeah, directly Lodha's and Hiranandani's. Yeah. But Correct. we have that in between period also, which needs to be reflected. And which is upon. actually, uh, which is actually a period of. Uh, uh, a great amount of critical thought on what is appropriate hmm. for a country like ours, you know, because now everything has kind of moved in private domain. If you see um, magazines, what, what they publish now, airports and farmhouses and, you know, some uh, chic corner of some restaurant somewhere. So all of it is kind of privately funded, privately, um, sort of private and controlled domains. Uh, you know, even the land on which... The, uh, it, it, it's basically everything behind the walls. And also monotonous because I, yeah. I just recently been to Jaipur and I could see some of the buildings which were really new, hmm. but they tried to maintain the old style. So, I don't know where <laughs> yeah, these are coming from. This is cartoonish yeah. versions of... Yeah, yeah so it's, that, that is something else. I mean, that is all confusing. But hmm. even the good stuff, hmm. I mean, the good, how many people are... Imagine uh, uh, the Jawahar Kala Kendra, for example, or imagine the, um, you know, the Asian Games Village, yeah. uh, or any 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 good building. The I am Kala, Bangalore. Kala Kendra in Goa. The yeah. Kala Academy in Goa. All these buildings were public buildings. They were accessible. Uh, even even the campuses of the IAMs um, uh, were fairly public. Hmm. They were easy to access. Uh, and uh, even SEPT has built these walls around them now and now you need an access card to go in. So, so fundamentally, everything has moved into a, the private domain and more so in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I did one, in, like uh, the 100th episode I did with uh, Val Krishna Doshi. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. listening to it today. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, they have become now more exclusive than the inclusive overall philosophy also. And and that's the problem with uh, 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 with uh, really everything. Mm -hmm. So so somehow these models of this this podcasting or or um, what we are also trying to do, we want to make it more Access public, accessible. more accessible. And that is the only way we can kind of uh, have a have an have a strong argument against the the bizarre madness of what's happening even in the media landscape. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, I mean, look at the trade shows and all that. They're, they are, uh, you know, they're vulgar to 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 me. I mean, I, it's just uh, impossible to imagine in a country like ours we can throw that much money towards something which which could just it, it just doesn't make sense to us. So in that way, also, I, I think uh, our effort is to also keep things which is which are more grounded and to talk to people who think in our way, which is the. This is the part which is rather difficult. Okay, okay. In fact, I've been struggling and I'm not like a subject expert, but uh, after Doshi sir's mm. uh, interview, uh, wherever I go and I see like a light in the day, mm. I generally reflect back, ki, why yeah. is it? Why can't we have like just a just day, day just the sunlight? Yeah. Right? So too much to ask. Yeah, his office in Sangat was just, he's sitting there and he's saying, was today I can tell you the, where the sun is exactly, even though there's concrete on our top. So yeah. it was so beautiful. And then these are small elements which keep adding and then sensitive people to to think and reflect yeah, back we on. Are just, yeah, yeah. We, have, we have been reduced to, uh, uh, you know, some kind of auditors of floor space yeah. uh, in, in the last 10 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the pity. Yeah. So going back to one of the points which you mentioned, which you're trying to take a thin slice of what, uh, uh, hmm. where the cross section is and then hmm. trying to make sense out of it or reconcile certain things yes. so on that note uh, I wanted to understand again as a layman and not as a subject expert I see two or three moments which I have consumed so far so there was a Bahas moment which probably somehow translated into the Chandigarh uh, project hmm. Uh, hmm. then I know one more which is the minimalism type moment right yeah. so uh, are there any such instances which you have found out that there were like clearly big milestones in way architecture was built? And in, then, in, and in, then, uh, 
with those few examples if you can tell us that how do you then uh, uh, how do you then decide what to archive Mm. Oh, right okay. because because there's so much noise and yeah, as yeah. you mentioned the the noise which is above the decibel level is obviously not in the not in the radar itself right yeah, so it's yeah, out yeah, it's so out. within the radar you have still noise and the signal mm. so how do you decide that this is a signal which needs to be archived yeah no that's a very tough call so um the the problem right now is that um we have just come we are kind of on the other end of the very confusing 15 years that we saw after the economic liberal after really the capital came in rushing you know uh, so uh, generally there is a lot of confusion okay so so the the movements and the styles were also a reflection of the larger societal agenda hmm. uh, i feel you know the the bahos movement for example was in in some way rooted in this idea that industrial production will answer the needs for the future or um, or mass production in some way so the the idea of simplicity and frugality and cleanliness and, and things like that um well at at some point we realized that um one of the difficult and uh, and overarching agendas is to build appropriately so i won't use the word sustainability hmm. because it's kind of yeah, thrown that around was, a, that was another yeah, yeah, word which thrown is thrown around, around a lot yeah. and 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 there are all gr- so, sorts of gray areas in the way people practice uh, this thing they call sustainability but in eco- some way eco-friendly, eco-friendly and <laughs> yeah no 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 there are a lot of uh, lot of fundamental questions there which re- have remained unanswered in the last 15 years nonetheless and, and there are many practices g- genuinely founded in this idea the idea is not a vertical it's not like i can create a practice i mean this is my thought out of sustain this is an observation from recent years is that you cannot really create a sus- practice around sustainability it can't say that every building i design is going to be sustainable and and there is a way of doing it no it, i don't think so i mean that's that's a, if if somebody is claiming that you have to re examine the claim nonetheless um there is an there is in silos a genuine attempt to find what is appropriate and this this attempt to find what is appropriate not just for the poor not just for the for the sake of the world or not just for the charity of it uh, it is also what is appropriate as 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 a consumptive practice you know because design was always consumed as well mm-hmm. i mean you can see uh, look at kanchanjunga they are uh, you know high end condos but look at look look at what it does you know it it does not it, it's it's kind of built right next to um uh fortunately or unfortunately ambani's house so you can you have a direct comparison for a city of what uh, the architecture at some point aspired to do even for the rich uh, and what the rich do now you know look at the ugly um, uh, <laughs> expression of that uh, you know that that pointless capital that floats around so um, and it's that's a single family home you know we have to keep reminding ourselves so in that sense um if you if you understand um um that um you know there there, there is uh, at all levels in in all kinds of uh, programmatic situations there is a genuine search for what could be appropriate and uh, what could be termed as an appropriate response especially for a country like ours in this time where you know what no matter what you say uh, there are children dying hungry every day so 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 then uh, you know it it just um, but i we have started to realize this this over reaching sustainability agenda is kind of people have moved on from there and there are certain practices in a very pragmatic research oriented genuine way are looking at appropriate models both of practice and of building hmm. and uh, uh by terming this word by by kind of emphasizing if, if this on this word appropriate i also mean that these practices designed for the rich it's not that uh, you can't build an exclusive thing and not thing because and at at every age we need to create these sort of um you know aesthetic uh examples of architecture you know that's what keeps us going really um, and so we cannot always negate that in the interest of the uh, greater good nonetheless um there are large questions in that you know so if you look at the practice of somebody like bijoy jain who has been um who 
which is a contemporary practice let's say one of the very uh, known ones internationally uh, apart from that architecture being very exclusive in its own sense but there there are also very critical questions there so recently he designed one one uh, um you know uh, one studio in uttarakhand um and and if you actually look at the architecture of that studio you realize the agenda that that goes beyond the practice so i'm not saying that's sustainable or that's appropriate but i'm just the saying the one that with the roof uh the stone roofs which mm-hmm. kind of it kind of hugs the site yeah, yeah, yeah. in some the merit list right uh yeah yeah, yeah it, yes, it got, yes. so so um uh also i i think one of our learnings from since you mentioned merit list is from this reiterative juries of the merit list is that that uh almost all the projects that have been selected by the jury many of them are in private domain many of them are expensive projects great detailing beautiful use of material but the big question was that what across all juries is that what is the challenge of the project and i think that uh, so if you look at the landscape of contemporary architecture in india currently the signal to us is that the few practices are reacting to this idea of one what is an appropriate way of doing a practice and of building in india and two what are the new tools to do that so we are not just romanticizing mud because i mean you it has clearly has limitations you know you can't really move on so you have to move on from that 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 real that kind of visual uh, you know sim- yeah, uh, romantic idea of uh, what is appropriate to really what is you know so if i'm i'm kind of uh, trying to do a a, a, a very uh, expensive let's say a uh, real estate in bandra kula complex how do i then apply any of it so I, i i end up creating a niche for myself great but of hardly any impact um uh, because the bkc is still to be built so so in in some way uh, we are also looking at the practice who can mainstream ideas and i think and that's the signal i have right now so there are certain people in our view whom we keep going to whom we cover extensively in our work as the journal you know whom we would like to 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 sort of have longer drawn um, conversations in greater depth with are the people who are able to articulate this question of what what's going to be appropriate to uh, as an as an architecture of india in let's say the two next two de- decades to come okay. One example is obviously Samip Padora's uh, Samip yeah Samip is li- library yeah. right so yeah. it 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 has that romantic uh, old traditional uh, yeah. uh, nomenclature of being sustainable but it's 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 still completely it's some, it's, it's quite avant garde i mean it's yeah. quite contemporary it, it's it's a it's a great exa- and his practice is a good example also because it's it's rooted in in research in some way but it's not kind of research of that that academic type you know it's an applied research of sort so it has agility mm. so he he can he can deploy his ideas very quickly some work some don't and we also know what don't and um, and everything can be kind of analyzed and his his work is also out there you know it's accessible mm. uh by he everyone is accessible. I, he I is accessible a, as a person yeah. but his work is also accessible i mean is it's accessible to students because the ideas are not uh you know kind of coated in this layers of intention uh he just does it okay. and then when it's out there um, it's visible yeah so yeah so that's a that's a good example of of a practice correct correct yeah, like that yeah so i mean uh, so to summarize what i understand is like being a curator or being at least a a medium you need to strongly reflect back on the thoughts and processes and ideologies of some legends and then uh not people who are practicing today not really mimicking that thought for the sake of it but really understanding the thought process and then yeah. making it appropriate yeah, very and important. then building yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you have to find a, a continuity of sorts correct correct in in a way that you don't make a caricature version of history but you also don't completely dissociate from it that's the problem of what 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 we have right now yeah the closest example i i also do sometimes musicians ka interview the closest example is uh, pula desh pande mm. and he he said that if you go and ask say bal gandharva ki how do you decompose this rag and what is this based on then he would say i don't understand i just sing 
so Correct. that comes naturally yeah and then so, but it's it's a study Correct. material for us in fact just two days before i did like uh, kabir never knew grammar <laughs> but yeah. his words were profound right Correct. so now we are doing phd on kabir say for example yeah so so you need to understand what the thought process was and then grammar and all those things are technical craft which you build over time yeah yeah that's a nice yeah that's a yeah. nice parallel <laughs> um yeah so what are your thoughts on like actually it naturally blends into the next mm. question so what are your thoughts on reflecting on your work and this is mainly because i've interviewed uh, dilip prabhakar who's like a very <coughs> talented uh, marathi hindi uh, uh, actor right mm. um his uh response to the questions were more uh, professional in nature they had certain different aspects to it different insights whereas if you if you say interview someone who's a nsd uh, pass out or a nsd teacher maybe mm, mm. they will have a different so broadly when when you speak to an academician or a researcher mm. they reflect more on their work mm. while professionals tend to do that less unless they are very slow in their way mm. uh, but there is she. there is a, uh, so there is a, there, so let's say that there is some merit to slowness mm. um so so um uh, i feel that while Uh, and and there is or then uh, they declare it in their biography after right. 70 or 80 right but very few people <coughs> continuously blog what they do mm-hmm. which i have been trying to do in my professional life as mm-hmm. well but do you think so so what are your thoughts on reflecting uh, back on your work overall so so what is the nature let's say of a, a reflective practice you know that that's the larger question i i see for us when we started working as architects because that work followed the publishing work hmm. it wasn't that i was doing buildings before i started publishing so we had a critical filter uh, already and that filter had become sharper over the years hmm. now the big problem happened is when we started doing work ourselves because uh, that was a free fall of sorts hmm. so while we could comment and analyze other people's work we realize that by holding ourselves to that standard is especially at the beginning of practice is going to be fairly impossible because you don't have um uh, so so you have the theoretical framework let's say but you have never put your hand made made your, in in the in the mud you know you don't you, have, you don't know what practice is like till you build and that is also a gray area for a lot of publishing in india because we we since we also are architects and we have projects and we build we also understand the immense difficulty of that task mm. uh and the i- incredible logistical effort that goes on behind you know construction so uh, in some way uh, it sobered us down a bit initially and it was very difficult for me personally because i could not reconcile some of the things that i was doing myself mm. as an architect uh because we had judged people at with, with a very high standard you know now the same benchmark if it starts applying to us from the very first day that we set up our practice it was fairly impossible mm. so initially uh, we made allowances really mm. and in in some way we uh, we kind of um, uh, created this uh but but our content work enables us to you know get this frameworks in place quickly to analyze our own work uh you know intelligently like critically. like the, uh, like correctly critically uh, yeah critically, critically yeah. also and and for example the juries of the merit list or for uh, are a great learning for us because in that room the conversations that uh, the members of the jury have give us this this kind of uh, you know lo- this kind of sense of um clarity mm. around our own work uh, which is the great advantage and also a, a a bit of disadvantage because we we are we i'm always scared of making common mistakes that people make uh, early in practice so for me that that learning curve has been a bit difficult um it's not that we have not made bad buildings we have made enough bad buildings now so that our buildings are start becoming <laughs> reasonably okay mm. nonetheless um the 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 content the content practice feeds into the architecture practice and that feeds back into the content practice quite and now it since um 
everyone in the office so we don't have two separate offices and everybody imagines us to be like there'll be editors here and there'll be architects it's not like that it's all a mess hmm. so everyone who works on the content project somewhere or other is interfaced with the architecture project hmm. and vice versa so everybody works on everything and that um has also not just us that has also enabled people in the studio to grow themselves hmm. so we question ourselves more often uh, we um uh, are sometimes overtly self critical uh, and and that is not a good thing because you freeze in a project you know if it is not kind of um checking against the benchmark that you have set for other people and suddenly it's yours you know and then you are trying to kind of look at looking at it as yourself uh it's it, it gets more and more difficult but what it helps is that it also helps us to pause and look back at what we have produced and and articulate um, learnings from it hmm. so in some way a part of the practice becomes applied research for the other part of the practice uh and um and therefore we are able to um write our projects better now uh and our process always starts with rearticulating the program and uh, we are also really working towards better systems to create models where we can also put our project out there for other people to uh criticize hmm. a culture that we don't have in india so in, in uh, the, the the important next step for us is that before we go out then start criticizing everybody else's work we thought that it will be yourself. important for us to put our work out, out there and let other people critically review it to create a better dialogue around uh, our practice so yeah so it's a yeah, it, it's it's a bit of um, uh, one thing feeds into another kind of thing now and now uh, about 4 years later i have kind of made peace with the fact that not everything that we do mm. is going to be as good as what samip does mm. you know so, so it's it's a bit of so we we agree that samip is a better architect now <laughs> so so sure. that's a that's where we are <laughs> mm. but still we are uh, we are doing better projects now okay. i'm very sure okay. than where we started mm-hmm. uh, buildings are much finer things mm-hmm. uh, than the crude things that we started with mm-hmm. yeah in fact uh, i usually say this to like my juniors in my office uh, that the idea of putting out thoughts of your uh, work hmm. helps in two three ways and i typically draw this parallel with instagram right hmm. so on instagram you put one photo it yeah. could be any random photo right uh, you get 10 likes hmm. and then you automatically get that dopamine rush ki next time boss 20 likes aani hai <laughs> so you do better work or you click a yeah, better yeah. photograph yeah, yeah. you put a nicer filter yeah. and do that right yeah. so that loop i'm yeah. just channelizing into a more positive thing this is yeah this is good for like some people no no those tools are great you Haan, know so to, same to... way like when you do some work mm. you put it out also so that two aspects one is you put it out so people comment respond it helps you reflect back mm, mm. and you want more comments and more likes for the next work which you will do so yeah. you put in more effort there yeah. plus it also help happens to mm. get document so yeah. this it's a win win situation when you and there uh, are also you know as you go um there are also people who you start relating to uh, you know for me um there have been few teachers let's say um so there is um percy pitawala who was my dean at the school we are still in touch we still share our work with him and he can be quite brutal about it hmm. so which is good uh, then there's chaya uh, nilkant nilkant chaya um, whom we share with or work occasionally with uh, bijoy ramachandran uh, we are good friends and i think his what he thinks about our projects is important to me so i kind of look forward to and and i work with dharmesh jadeja uh, the studio in oroville hmm. uh, so he's uh, also uh, a of he he's basically i look at his work more as a compass of sorts you know whether we are going wow. off track of <laughs> practice or we are still like sort of in and and i have also sought consciously sought advice and from uh, people like brinda sumay and nandini who we meet quite often now so i can share more difficult parts of our work with them mm. so so there are friends who are, who who we seek uh, critical review and advice of but but to be able to do that ourselves like you said mm. is 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 where uh, and we want to set up systems for that you know mm. 
uh, in in a way that it it can feed back into our own work mm. uh, that's the most rewarding part of matter in some way mm. to have this dual nature of practice where you are also publishing as well as authoring projects um that that one thing if starts feeding positively into the another, another hmm. it's a great place to be in okay. yeah uh i don't know like there's like i think this conversation can be like infinite or whatever yeah, yeah, i i have all the time <laughs> i'm not uh, no just to conclude here. this episode sure. uh, which also uh, is the nature of content which is getting produced so i believe classical work um, has always been like a pull like people hmm. generally so i hunted sanjay mohe's uh, video and watched it in uh-huh, was 45 yes. minutes uh, i just like yeah. during lunch or wherever i could get time i just watched yeah. it right but uh, that work i went to it hmm. whereas say like a stand up comedian who's obviously doing a great job of critiquing the government or mm-hmm. whoever it is but it has a seedha push from a lot of people yeah. right so what are your thoughts uh, like how long do you think it will take people to understand the value of archiving and documentation and then that pull will eventually yeah. become push organically yeah so so it's a it's a question um so it's a uh, nice question because there are these two uh, kinds of flows there's this extremely fast pop kind of flow which is instagram and social media and just put it out there and let's see and uh, which which is um um Uh, the potential of which uh, very few people have actually been able to tap positively uh, bus ride is one of them ayas and bus guys, ride is guys are phenomenal. so there 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 is a way in which they seek feedback and that 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 work that they put out i think is kind of a, a nudge towards seeking that feedback it's not random hmm. it looks like as if they are dabbling but there is this another under layer which i think is consistent so you pull him up next time and ask him about this yeah. and uh, um Uh, but there is this another one which is sort of the slow uh and um um uh, sort of undercurrent which is consistent long so there are these two kinds of bouts of um uh, you know one in which you just make something and send it out and then you have feedback you take it back make some quick changes send it out but the more foundational ideas you need a little more time and depth for mm. so um uh, going back to the question i think uh, um we are trying to do both um we know that we are good in the second part where things are slower and longer mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we have found an audience for that mm-hmm. like you are uh, uh, you said you um you watched you listened to that whole or watched uh, some of his episode there are these long ones on matter which are which we think that uh, you know we were when we were in the room also we felt like you know let's get done with it now enough <laughs> but when we came back and edited the whole thing we realized the value of this because in some way this longer conversations have a better shelf life and this the, and that's the critical part because the, the instagram post is dated in a day while a book will stay for a long time you know so while the book Uh, does it so th- i'm not saying i'm not uh, dismissing the importance of the instagram post they are the they are the initial <coughs> atoms which which yeah. where you find the final organism correct right? correct so, yeah. i mean and, and also they are like test pieces you know you right. send something out then suddenly um, a lot of people like it and you think oh rubbish you know i made it and so in some some way it is also like a you can do some small dark social experiments with mm. that kind of stuff on the other hand i think we are more interested in the shelf life of mm. an idea so uh, as matter we think that um, an idea can only have shelf life if it is deliberated enough and the deliberation takes time it cannot be done in an instagram post you know mm. and the like is not the kind of feedback that really gives you any any indication of um you know whether what somebody's opinion about it mm. so to have an intelligent con- conversation around work that must be enough data on the table right now we are interested in creating that data mm-hmm. and a lot of people and a lot of times people uh, tell us that why don't you write a critical piece about architecture in india and why why can't we publish but there is time for that you know right mm-hmm. now the, the observation itself is taking time but uh, i feel that uh, just like this long podcast uh, hopefully will have a larger shelf life than um 
than anything which is out uh, which is put out there just to kind of test the hmm. public domain water you know hmm. um and and uh, initially we were also worried about this whole thing you know that design is a little uh, muted our artworks are generally uh, there is no the overall niche, yeah. niche yeah. hai yeah it's it's a there is a consistent the uh, simplicity and uh, silence around things but now uh, so this this year we crossed uh, a landmark uh, 200000 unique visitors hmm. 2019 we just went through the data of last year so we feel that if we have 200000 as an audience uh, which is sizable with considering we are not really mainstream that way uh the idea that these things will have greater shelf life is validated mm. you know to a certain extent and we we will never have 30000 uh, um you know like likes on users, uh, yeah, yeah. Huh. so we will never be that we, we th- that's not our aspiration also but over a year a single post keeps accumulating visitors and we are also conscious of who are returning mm. how many return uh, readers are to a particular post and to certain posts there are too many so we we think that these things also have uh, sort of his recall solid value in it yeah recall so therefore i think it's it's in in that sense the archive uh, works hmm. um what it doesn't have right now is is a way of uh, um yeah, a cohesive let's say structure but i am not too uh, worried about that hmm. i think we are uh, we another 5 years and that structure will sort of automatically emerge and also we don't want to push our observations on our i our analysis on people hmm. we are just right now interested in putting our observations out there yeah. we are not uh, judging anything okay. we have no judgment to this work except for the fact that if it has made to our platform it goes through certain basic filters hmm. if it goes to certain basic filters you can consider it important enough for us personally and for certain audience of people to be critical about mm. or to have a discussion around and if that achieves if if we achieve that uh i think then we are somewhere mm. you know that's the whole plan mm-hmm. yeah actually same with me because uh, uh i tend to interview few, yeah. few people whom i may not resonate with yeah. so i've put a very basic filter that in in case of say music or arts mm. uh, basically mm. for music mainly mm. i would really like to have people who have more than 25 years of riyas <laughs> now that's a very objective straightforward one filter yeah. hmm. then it could be the musician could be extreme leftist or rightist i don't care yeah, right yeah. because in the, then the whole objective of gathering or documenting what is the other word for riyas the, the there is riyas and there is uh so there is ahat nada and anahat nada so huh. you you basically work No, no. Riyas is reflective, no, repetitive Riyaz practice. Riyas is practice. Yeah, yeah. And but what is perform. performance? Performance. Then you so go out and is, perform. Huh, so what is that? Uh, what is the uh, word? Hindi for word. Uh, uh, I, I don't okay. know. No, there is some very interesting. So, anyway, so basically, uh, 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 no, go on. I'm just. Uh, huh, no, so that's that's the premise. In when uh, so the idea of documentation should be without judgment, as you mentioned. Hmm, hmm. It's it's just accumulating perspectives, right? Yeah. yeah. and and uh, the the thing is that you know for uh, i love podcasts mm. because um they are that kind of difficult medium mm. they are not easy to absorb you know like a fast food mm. content uh, yeah. that we have podcasts uh, and and a lot of people come uh, to me because because what happens is the content is good you know uh you can you should not allow dumb people to make money out of it you know that's something mm. that somebody had told me once that don't put content out there um for cheap hmm. put it for free because that's there's a lot of value in it hmm. uh but don't monetize it hmm. that way you know hmm. because the, the, if when you start talking to people in especially when they are in consulting and you know and and they kind of start you know that you have so many visitors let's kind of monetize it let's hmm. put a, a figure to it you know that i am not interested i yeah. it's the important thing and there are of course models i'm i'm sure it's difficult for you to sustain it's difficult for us to sustain as well and and i'm sure in this particular kind of model that we have uh, 
selected for ourselves we have set ourselves to this mm. difficult situation but only this will ha- um s- uh, stay mm-hmm. i don't think uh, no but it has to be a very conscious call because yes facebook is free forever for everyone mm. but there's a very dark side to it right <laughs> and no, no the, the, the problem is that uh, uh, the also the problem is that um um you must protect it from people who um will use it for that propaganda you know mm. so we we are very conscious about that fact we won't let anybody come close to our platforms so that they can promote themselves mm. this is this is very important to us okay. so if there are people who are interested in a genuine conversation on their work mm. on architecture on larger issues that concern us we are happy to extend this effort to them mm-hmm. therefore frame and therefore everything mm-hmm. but we don't want somebody to 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 uh, go on the frame platform and start you know promoting their ideas yeah. and i think we have found people there mm-hmm. in some way you know so we don't have we, we don't want to make stars out of people that's not the whole ag- and i'm sure that's not your agenda as well mm-hmm. it's is this intelligent conversation that we are really interested in correct correct yeah yeah Cool I think uh, Thanks Kedar yeah Yeah I mean I would really we can have like another audio gain session uh, on some other topic generally to understand more bits about yeah, yeah, matters sure. philosophy yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, for this one on I think uh, this is a good note to end this thanks cool. for giving your time it was really No no thanks it was very nice yeah. I was also a bit skeptical but yeah mm. now, now now I know Cool Okay thanks okay, Kedar thank you That's it And that's it from today's gain session Catch us on iTunes, Savan, Stitcher or any podcasting app you use. Do rate us on iTunes and follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Stay tuned for more gyan on audiogyan.com. Till then, bye. At Speedway, we've always been here to get you what you need when you need it. We're committed to keeping our stores open, clean, and safe, so you can stay fueled and refreshed all summer long. We've got cold drinks for hot days and frozen drinks for even hotter ones, plus energy boosts, quick bites, and pick-me-ups. We're always on your way, and we're always here for you. So no matter what you need, when you stop by, we'll be ready. Now buy any three cooler beverages and get 500 bonus Speedy Rewards points.